It's time to get your news on. We are VK1 WIA. And getting it on and all together this week, WIA Vice President Lee Moyle, VK3GK, Marty, VK4KC, who last week reported from the beach with Boater News. Well, he moves inland and goes parking with Pota. And John Knox, VK4FJRK, takes us to Ireland and another Rewind story. These plus much, much more in this edition of news for week commencing July 16, 2023 from the Wireless Institute of Australia and editor Graham VK4BB. Connecting Australian radio amateurs, the Wireless Institute of Australia and the weekly news service continues. We are VK1 WIA. Now, a pirate to the west. A pirate station from Marion Island. The South African Radio League Secretary has been informed of a pirate station operating on 17 metres using FT8 and using the call sign ZS8C, Zulu Sierra 8 Charlie. Carson McAvee, ZS8C, was active from Marion Island in 2013 and 2014, but that licence was cancelled in 2015. It has been confirmed there are no radio operators on Marion Island, Gough Island or at the SANAE base. So, be warned and don't claim ZS8C. This is WIA Vice President Lee Moyle, VK3GK. WRTC is an international event held every four years that brings together teams of amateur radio contesters to compete against each other on a level playing field. The 2022 event was held in Italy last weekend, a year later than scheduled due to COVID. 2026, the next WRTC will run in the UK. The organising committee will be inviting around 50 international teams of two people to come to the UK in July 2026. Most of those teams will gain the right to compete through their success in a number of qualifying contests between October 2023 and March 2025. Many visitors also attend the event, so this will be an amazing social occasion for all of the international contesting community as well as being the most intense test of the competing team's operating skills. A great competition environment will give them the opportunity to use equivalent sites and antennas scattered across East Anglia in order to compete fairly and evenly amongst themselves in the usual 24-hour intensive operating marathon. More details on website wrtc2026.org. For now, 7-3 from Lee, VK3GK. VK1 WIA. Now with international news, Jason, VK2 LAW. Hello. Leading this week's international news from Region 1 ITUR Working Party 4C meeting number 30. Couldn't agree on the technical and operational measures required to ensure the protection of the RNSS, Radio Navigation Satellite Service, in the amateur 23cm band relating to WRC 23. The group struggled to find consensus amongst the RNSS community on the measures it could propose to WP5A. The outcome of the discussion and final elements of the ITUR recommendation remain uncertain, and work on this topic will continue at the next ITUR WP5A meeting in September with some urgency to finalise ahead of the WRC. In other IARU news, the 58th meeting of the IARU Administrative Council, AC, was held in person at Friedrichshafen, Germany during Ham Radio 2023. On the subject of strategic planning, preliminary results from the work of the Relationship Working Group, Legal Working Group, and the Finance Working Group were approved. Their work will continue to address a planned restructuring of IARU. An initial report will be presented at the Region 1 conference in Serbia in November. The AC received a report on the completion of the IARU officer consultative process regarding nominating candidates for the Officers of President and Vice President for the 2024-2029 term. The nominees will be formally submitted to member societies for ratification later this year. Reports were also received from IARU Beacon Project International Coordinator Peter Jennings, Alpha Bravo 6 Whiskey Mike slash Victor Echo 3 Sierra Uniform November, Electromagnetic Compatibility Coordinator Martin Sack, Golf 8 Kilo Delta Foxtrot, Satellite Advisor Hans Blondiel Timmerman, 
Papa Bravo to Tango, and Emergency Communications Special Advisor Rod Stafford, Whiskey 6 Romeo Oscar Delta. Preliminary thoughts on how to celebrate the 100th anniversary of IARU, founded in Paris in 1925, were exchanged, and nominations for the IARU Michael J. Owen VK3KI Award and the IARU Diamond Award were received. To Germany, German entry-level N-Class amateur radio licence. Amateur Radio Newsline are reporting the regulations will come into force on the 21st of June 2024 the week before next year's ham radio event, 28th to the 30th. And indeed, the very first examinations for this new class of licence will take place at Ham Radio 2024. The new licence will allow access to 70 centimetres, 2 metres and 10 metres, running a maximum of 10 watts, and will conform to SEPT specifications for an entry-level licence. Some sad news of a silent key. George, uniform Yankee 5 X-ray Echo, was a friend and an advocate to many. A number of reports are circulating advising George recently became a silent key. He's clearly left his mark. In 1993, while attending the IOTA convention in Spain, George encouraged the creation of what would become the Russian Robinson Club a group of adventurous amateurs who would come to operate out of particularly challenging locales in the polar regions. He later became QSL manager for many of the Russian expeditions in both the Antarctic and the Arctic. He'd also served as the president of the UDXC and vice president of the Robinson Club. One of his de-expeditions was Echo Mike 20 Yankee Uniform, in which he activated the Chernobyl Exclusion Zone in 2006 with Boris Uniform Tango 7 Uniform Tango. Licensed in 1966, he was an active ham whose contesting activity had won him many awards and plaques. He was also a published author and had been correspondent for a number of amateur radio magazines, including Radio and Radio Mir, both in Moscow and Radio Hobby in Kiev. George was 75. To news from Region 2, Whiskey 1 Victor Charlie Mike receives grant for the Vintage Radio and Communications Museum from the ARDC. W1 VCM is the amateur radio club station of the museum in Connecticut. The museum is run by volunteers and it opened in 1990. It's dedicated to the preservation of old-time communications equipment and to educating the public about communication systems of the past. Vintage Radio and Communication Museum Director John Ellsworth emphasised the importance of the Amateur Radio Club as part of the story of communications, stating, During our tours, we discuss the history and development of radio and television. Having a working radio station available reinforces many of the topics discussed. Later in today's WIA National News, we'll rewind to another museum, and that one features a spark gap transmitter amongst its treasures. Youth on the Air Camp 2023 is a camp for young amateur radio operators in North, Central and South America. The youth will operate the special event station Victor Echo 3 Yota while camp is in session with a special focus on satellite operations occurring on Wednesday, July 19. Additionally, an ARIS contact with the International Space Station is scheduled to take place on Tuesday, July 18. The ad hoc group Shortwave Modernization Coalition has petitioned the Federal Communications Commission in the USA to allow data communications on multiple bands within the HF 2 to 25 megahertz range with up to 20 kilowatts including in-bands immediately adjacent to spectrum allocated to the amateur radio service. This group appears to represent high-speed stock trading interests. The FCC have asked for comments by July 31 and reply comments by August 15. While the petitioners exclude the amateur bands, high power operations on immediately adjacent bands are proposed, hence the ARRL is reviewing the petition. Weird and wonderful. Well, maybe not weird, but wonderful they are. And the tech behind them has been reverse engineered in a recent Hackaday release. We're talking about LED wristbands. LED wristbands are becoming more of a common feature in large arena concerts and events with a variety of capabilities and technical implementations. 
If you haven't worn one yet, ask your kids or grandkids. I'm sure they'll have at least one stashed away as a souvenir. LED wristbands are, in fact, wearable light shows. Yep, right on your wrist. Some events use them to flash in time with the music on stage. Some can highlight a section of the audience. Much like when we used to go to the royal shows and the ring announcer would get the crowd to sing out the next colour the sky rockets would be. Some large, outdoor and indoor events use pan-tilt IR emitters mounted on lighting towers. The operators can sweep across the audience controlling colour and light levels or activating pre-programmed sequences. Individual control is also available to signify winners of giveaways at events. The three main control technologies are infrared light, RF radios and Bluetooth. The IR controlled ones are the simplest and Hackaday have covered a teardown, a reverse engineering effort and reflash of the PixMob IR armbands. For VK1WIA National News in Sydney, I'm Jason VK2LAW. From here, there and everywhere, you've tuned to the Wireless Institute of Australia's National News Service. We are VK1WIA. Now, operational news with Felix VK4FUQ. Hello there. Now, contest wise, July 15. Trans Tasman Low Band Contest on now. Low band activity between VK NZL 160, 80 and 40 metres. July 15, 16 UTC. Also taking place this weekend is CQ Magazine's Worldwide VHF Contest. It's running from 18 hours UTC on July 15 until 21 hours UTC on July 16. The contest promotes VHF activity on these 6 and 2 metre bands, with participation from around the world. The objectives of this contest are for amateurs around the world to contact as many other amateurs as possible in the contest period, to promote VHF and for interested amateurs to collect VHF maidenhead grid locators for award credits. All amateur radio frequencies on 50 MHz and 144 MHz may be used as authorised by local law and licence class. July 22. The second leg of the 2023 Youth on the Air contest is on the air from 1000 hours to 2159 hours UTC on Saturday 22 July with CW and phone activity on 80, 40, 20, 15 and 10 metres. The exchange for a single operator is an RS or RS2 report in your age 1 January 2023. The next RSGB IATA contest is 29 and 30 July 2023. August 12 and 13, Remembrance Day contest. August 26, 27, Alara contest. October, Oceania DX contest. DX window. Team Alistair. 4W6RU from near Dili until July 20. QSL via R7AL using club logs OQRS or LOTW. Portugal. Special event station CR6J will be QRV in observance of the 41st International Faro Moto motorcycle gathering in Faro from July 17 to 23. Activity will be on 80 through 6 metres on SSB, CW and digital. QSL via CT1EHX. Neoway. E6AM from October 10 to 23. CW, SSB, FT8, and maybe some RT on 160 to 6 metres. QSL via Club Logs OQRS, preferred, LOTW, or via LZ1GC, direct or bureau. Taiwan. BM0 QSO until December 31, mostly using digital modes. QSL via BM2 JCC. For BK1 WIA National News, I'm Felix, BK4 FUQ Inningham. Wireless weather and sunspot counts hit a 21 year high. The sun is partying like it's 2002. That's the last time sunspot counts were as high as they are now. Last month, the average number was 163. That, according to the Royal Observatory of Belgium's Solar Influence Data Analysis Centre. 
Solar Cycle 25 wasn't expected to be this strong. When it began in December 2019, forecasters believed it would be a weak cycle, akin to its immediate predecessor, number 24. Instead, 25 has shot past Solar Cycle 24 and may be on pace to rival some of the strongest cycles of the 20th century. The last time sunspot numbers were this high, the sun was on the verge of launching the great Halloween storms of 2003, which included the strongest X-ray solar flare ever recorded, X-45, and a CME so powerful it was ultimately detected by the Voyager spacecraft at the edge of the solar system. Wireless weather. As here on Earth, it's hard to predict. Rewind. Rewind. And it's off to Ireland for a look back into our past. I'm VK4FJRK, a Galway museum capturing the technological advancements of the 20th and 21st centuries is to be open to the public for the first time, and it is hoped that it could become one of the city's leading tourist attractions. So if you're planning a trip to the Emerald Isle in the near future or the distant future, this is for you. The Computer and Communications Museum of Ireland, based at the University of Galway's Data Science Institute, or DATA if you prefer, it's located in Dangan and was founded in 2009 and ever since has served as an important learning resource for schools and colleges. But according to the museum's curator and co-founder, Brendan Smith, Opening the doors to the wider public offers a unique opportunity to learn about the development of digital technologies and electrical communications in what is the only facility of its kind in the Emerald Isle. Uh, Mr Smith says, while we have uh, rare and noteworthy historical artefacts secured in display cabinets for viewing only, our approach has always been to encourage, where possible, visitor interaction with our exhibits, as we see ourselves as a living museum with a hands-on approach. He also says this would be a major drawcard to add to the city's other wonderful drawcards. Mr Smith says there's a wonderful operational Morse code-based Spark wireless telegraphy transmitter exhibit put together by museum board member Frank McCurry that recreates a Marconi radio system from the 1890s. The museum boasts a wide variety of games, consoles and computers, taking visitors on a journey from the popular 20th century games like uh, Pac-Man, Sonic the Hedgehog, Mario, early FIFA and Star Trek, right up to the 21st century developments, including a suite of original Microsoft Xbox consoles, which were the first to allow multiple users to play games online. Well, my time is up. For WIA National News and Rewind, this is VK4FJRK, John Knox. From here, there and everywhere, you've tuned to the Wireless Institute of Australia's National News Service. We are VK1 WIA. Now, special interest group news with Bruce, VK3 Triple F. And a very good day to you. Worldwide Special Interest Group News, Worldwide Flora Fauna Program, Parks on the Air, SOTA and other adventure groups. September 1st and 2nd, deemed to be the first World HEMA Day. HEMA is a Summits Award scheme which started in the UK but has spread across Europe and into Australia. It is a scheme more for the hill walker than the mountaineer. Leisurely exercise, fresh air and good radio contacts make up the typical HEMA activation. Dare we point out so leisurely that this World HEMA Day actually takes two days to complete. What, you ask? Why does it start on Friday when many are still working? Well, actually, it is one day, but only if you live in New Zealand. If you would like help to try and work this out, this story sent in by Ron VK3AFW, points us to the HEMA website. So, for the leisurely walkers amongst us, just remember, September 1st and 2nd will be the first World HEMA Day. Now, even if a little hill or hummock has you stumped, never fear, Potter is here, as is Marty, VK4KC. The Parks on the Air admin team in Australia and New Zealand have been hard at work adding parks into the POTA database. 
New Zealand now has over 600 parks and Australia over 7,000. The focus for Australia has been on adding state forests. Many state forests have good vehicle access, camping facilities and are dog friendly. To find parks near you, go to the POTA website, pota.app, and click on the map. All licensed hams are welcome to participate in the POTA program as activators and or as hunters. To see the program in action, visit Peter, VK3YE's YouTube channel and view his most recent videos on activating POTA parks. This is Marty, VK4 Kilo Charlie, saying POTA on. Thanks, Marty, and POTA on we will. The camp for young amateur radio operators in Region 2 is upon us, as Jason has reported in today's news from Your WIA, and it includes a Parks on the Air activation. Neil Rapp, the camp director, says 15 QRP stations will activate a two-for-one POTA location. Central Experimental Farm National Historic Site, VE5095, and Rideau Canal National Historic Site VE4882 on 40 metres, 20 metres, 15 and 10 metres. Weather permitting, the activation will be on the air on Tuesday, July 18th from 1900 Zulu to 2100 Zulu and Thursday, July 20th from 1300 Zulu to 1600 Zulu. Worldwide Special Interest Groups, Final Frontier. Ham radio operators are picking up a strong signal from space. It's NASA's Stereo A spacecraft returning home after 17 years. I'm having fun with Stereo A, reports Scott, VE7TIL of British Columbia. The spacecraft is coming close to Earth this northern summer and I can now receive its signal using a small 26-inch dish in my backyard, he said. Spaceweather.com says Stereo A left Earth in 2006, launched from Cape Canaveral with its sister ship Stereo B. Both spacecraft were on a mission to the far side of the sun. Over the years, they would circle behind the sun, beaming images back to Earth so scientists could make 3D models of solar activity. In 2014, Stereo B failed and was not heard from again. Stereo A kept going and now it's on its way back. Ham radio operators are picking up signals from Stereo 8 at 8443.58 MHz. Ariane 5 rockets into retirement. Europe's workhorse rocket has completed its final mission, launching two satellites into orbit before retiring after an illustrious 27-year career. The Ariane 5, known for its power and reliability, took off from Europe's spaceport in French Guiana on July the 5th, marking its 117th and last orbital liftoff. Worldwide special interest groups, IOTA, be listening for a six-member team of activators using the call sign RI1OR from Bolshoi Solovetsky Island, IOTA number EU066 from the 25th to the 29th of July. They will operate CW, SSB and digital modes on 160 to 10 metres. Send QSLs via Romeo Zulu 3 Echo Charlie. Netherlands. Schoen Divalond EU146 in the RSGB IOTA contest. This will be a multi two effort. QSL via Papa Alpha 3 Echo Yankee Charlie. And United States, during the RSGB IOTA contest, Jeff W7BRS plans to operate from the November November 7 Sierra Sierra station located on Vashon Island, NA065. This will be a single-op, high-power effort, QSL via Kilo 6 Uniform Foxtrot Oscar. And Maldives, 8Q7HU, on air until Tuesday, July 11th to 18th on 40 to 6 metres, QSL via Echo Bravo 7 Delta X-Ray. Worldwide special interest groups, Maritime, including ILLW News. 
A reminder now that International Lighthouse and Lightship Weekend is coming up soon. The event is usually held on the third weekend of August, which in 2023 is the 19th and 20th of August. It's one of the most popular amateur radio events in the calendar. And in past years, there have been more than 500 entries from over 40 different countries. To date, WIA News has not received details of any activations planned for VK and ZL. More details about the event and a registration form can be found at illw.net. Worldwide Special Interest Groups, Radio Scouting. For this report, we're off to Salon, thanks to AR Newsline and ALEC VK2APC. Thanks, Bruce. An introductory lecture on amateur radio was held at S. Thompson Preparatory School, organised jointly by the Scouts of the School and the Radio Society of Sri Lanka. Many old-timers tuned in today will have known Sri Lanka by the name Ceylon. The lecture, delivered by RSSL Secretary Victor 4S7VK and Bharat 4S6ABC, provided the young scouts with valuable insights into our amateur radio world and its various aspects. The scouts were given hands-on training on operating an amateur radio station, guided by experienced hams from the RSSL focusing on operating procedures and etiquette. The session concluded with a demonstration of slow-scan television and its practical applications, including the transmission of weather data through WEFAX. The event showcased the potential of amateur radio to support the Scouts' mission and fostering a desire to participate in future events such as the Jamboree on the Air or Joda. The Radio Society of Sri Lanka hopes that this event will inspire more young voices to engage in amateur radio activities in the future. Now back to you, Bruce. Worldwide Special Interest Groups Rescue Radio India VU A radio wireless system coordinated under the Revenue Department in Trissa has been used to effectively coordinate relief and rescue work during floods and natural calamities. The system emerged as both a multiplier and a fallback for the disaster management force when power outages and remoteness render other communication systems defunct. The network of some 35 amateur radio operators can be integrated into the system in case of emergency. Their service was used recently for official communication during the Trisipuram when all the mobile services got jammed as thousands of people gathered in the city. The Trisapuram is the annual Hindu temple festival held in Trissa, Kerala, India. It is held at the temple when the moon rises with the Puram star in the Malayalam calendar month of Medam and is the largest and most famous of all Purams in India. I'm Bruce, VK3 Triple F in sunny Bendigo. Across Australia from VK1 WIA, you're tuned to the WIA National News Service. In South Australia, this broadcast can be heard on VK5 RAD 147 MHz at 9am local time. I'm Shirley, VK5 YL. 2023 Social Scene VK6 Northern Corridor Radio Group's Hamfest, August 20. In VK4, September 9, it's Sunfest at the Mountain Creek State School. In VK7, Alarami 2023. This is Linda, VK7QP, coordinator of Alarami Hobart, which will be held from 3rd to the 6th of November 2023. Registrations close on the 26th of July so that we can know who is coming and we can finalise our bookings. The registration form is on the Alara website, alara.org.au. Looking forward to meeting old friends and seeing for the first time those I've only spoken to on the air. Make sure you register by 26th of July. Linda, VK7QP. Thanks, Linda. And now up to VK3, the Rosebud Radio Fest, held at the Eastbourne Primary School, Sunday, November 12th. And the last one for the year, VK5 Amateur Radio Experimenters Group, Radio and Electronic Sale, November 26. Till next we meet, I'm Graham, VK4BB. Walk softly. This has been the Wireless Institute of Australia with the weekly news service. 
This broadcast is in text, audio and video and is accessed on wia.org.au. Go to see Bevan, VK5 BD's ATV and YouTube channel. This has been WIA National News. We're back now, live and local, and your voice, your callbacks. And don't forget, tick like.